Let's start off with the same story that we told back in Volumes 1 and 2. We're going to find equilibria and then linearize about them using that linearization to determine things like stability, etc. So here we go. Let's say that we've got a dynamical system in arbitrary dimensions, either in continuous time, dx equals f of x, or discrete time, ex equals f of x. Let's say we have an equilibrium at x equals a, then what we're going to do is linearize about the equilibrium. We're going to introduce a new variable, h, that is how far away from a you are. That is h equals x minus a. And then what we want to know is thinking about that h as a perturbation, how does the perturbation evolve? In continuous time, we would be looking at dh. Well, what is that? By definition, that's d of x minus a. Since d is a linear operator, that gives us the derivative of x minus the derivative of a. But since a is an equilibrium, its derivative is zero. Nothing changes. That means that dh equals dx, which is f of x. Now it's time to Taylor expand that guy about x equals a. So we're going to say that f of x is really f at a plus h. That is, by Taylor's formula, f at a plus the derivative of f at a times h plus terms that are higher order in h, so quadratic and higher. Now, ignoring those higher order terms and using the fact that for an equilibrium, f of a is equal to zero, that means that dh is approximately, or to first order, equal to the derivative of f at a times h. That is a linear dynamical system. We have linearized the dynamics about the equilibrium. Now, this is exactly the same proof that we used in 2D. It's just that instead of these variables being in 2D, they're in arbitrary dimensions. And the same proof works for a discrete time dynamical system. If you want to see the details on that, go back to what we did back in volume two. Now you may be a little uncomfortable with the notation that we're using for the derivative or even what we mean by the derivative, depending on your multivariable calculus background. So let's recall, if you have a function capital F, k inputs, k outputs, then the derivative of f, which I'm writing with those brackets around it, and the reason I'm writing it that way is because it is a linear transformation. It is interpretable as a k by k matrix, whose entries, the i comma jth entry, is really the partial derivative of the ith output of f with respect to the jth input x, j. Now again, depending on your calculus background, you may have called this a Jacobian. I don't know, what is up with that name? I mean, Jacobian, come on. No, it's just a derivative, that's all it is. And you may have seen everything expressed in terms of gradients. No, 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 no. Think in terms of linear transformations. That's the right way to do derivatives. Maybe we ought to do a brief example, a simple example, kind of simple. This is continuous time 3D. Consider the following completely unmotivated system. dx dt equals 10y minus 10x. dy dt equals 28x minus y minus xz. And dz dt equals xy minus 8 thirds z. Now notice that this has an equilibrium at the origin. What can we say about it? Well, considering the right-hand side as being a function f, a function with three inputs, x, y, and z, and three outputs, the derivative of x, derivative of y, derivative of z, then if I compute the derivative of this function f, what do I get? I get a three by three matrix, where the first column is the partials with respect to x. That gives us negative 10, 28 minus z, and y. The second column is the partials with respect to y. That gives me 10, negative 1, x. The third column is the partials in z. That's 0, and negative x, and negative 8 thirds. 
Now, this derivative varies from place to place. If we evaluate the derivative at the origin, set x, y, and z equal to zero, we get a numerical matrix that has a really nice block diagonal structure. And what that block diagonal structure tells us in particular is that if we look at that that last eigenvalue along the z direction, that negative 8 thirds, that means that we have a stable eigenspace there along the z axis. Everything is coming in. What about the other eigenspaces? Well, this is going to be spanned by the xy plane because of this block structure. Isolating that 2 by 2 block, what do I see? I see trace is negative. Determinant is do, 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 negative. That means we've got a saddle in that xy plane. So we can get sort of the local picture of what is going on with these linearized dynamics. OK, now that's a weird example, but maybe remember that. We might see that again someday. OK, let's move on and discuss stability, getting to the stability criterion. The setup is we're going to compute the eigenvalues of the linearization at the equilibrium. And we're going to work eigenvalue by eigenvalue. So we're going to take a particular eigenvalue, lambda i, and then remember, we have to break it down into continuous versus discrete time. So we're going to say that this eigenvalue is a stable eigenvalue if, in continuous time, its real part is negative. In discrete time, this corresponds to saying that the modulus is less than 1. We say that the eigenvalue is unstable if, in continuous time, its real part is positive. In discrete time, its modulus is bigger than 1. And if it's not stable, it's not unstable, it is neutral where in continuous time the real part is zero, so something like a zero eigenvalue or a part of a pure imaginary eigenvalue pair. In discrete time, we say that it's neutral when the modulus is equal to one. So in the end, what we're going to say is that an equilibrium is stable if all of its eigenvalues are stable eigenvalues. We're going to say that an equilibrium is unstable if any eigenvalue is unstable. Now, this is just like we did in 2D, but there's a lot more eigenvalues around. Now, you have to be careful. If you look at other textbooks, if you learn dynamical systems from another source, there are other types of stability. The language is a little bit complicated. We might say, to be a little more specific, that this is linearly stable or linearly unstable. So when you're out in the wild, be careful with terminology.